Hello, and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. On this episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, let's put it this way, what we're going to be doing. Brad, the Siegfried line is an empty shell. They stripped all the equipment and sent it to the Eastern Front. You give me that gas, I'll green ground, I'll kill Germans. You give me 400,000 gallons, I'll go all the way to Berlin. Because we're going to race to the Rhine by Phalanx Games. Now, as the name implies, and of course, as you can probably guess from my best impression of, well, best impression of um, George C. Scott doing Patton, um, this is what it says it is. You have your three commanders from the Western Front. Red, Montgomery. White, Bradley. And blue, nice touch by the way, is Patton. Okay? Basically the goal is to try to get to the Rhine, which is way up there at the top. Okay, You can see the different colors there. That's the routes that each side can take. Okay, Basically you can only move your units along those routes. Some spaces, like over here at Luxembourg and at Trier. I think I'm pronouncing that right. My French never was very good. If they have dual colors, then they can be moved into by either side there. We'll talk about those little metal symbols a little bit later. But the goal is eventually, as you can see there, there is the Rhine to get across the Rhine. And of course, way up here at the top corner here for you uh, Bridge Too Far fans, which is one of my favorite war movies too, there is Arnhem. Up in the corner, up there. Did it show up? No, there it is. Sorry. Here we go. Arnhem. Right here is Arnhem. Okay. So that is the goal. You win the game either by getting across the Rhine, or you win the goal by having the most medals. You basically can gain medals in different ways by taking certain actions, capturing certain locations, as you just saw there, and also defeating certain units of the mighty German Wehrmacht. So that's the basic deal there. Let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, this will be the only time you're hearing dice in this video because this is dun 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 a diceless game. Okay. And is this a war game? Well, I'll let you think about it. I'll tell you what I think at the end. So, first thing we're going to do here is figure out who goes first. Which there's a track down here. And once you figure it out, that's the order for the entire game. Okay, typically you're supposed to take three markers, shuffle them up and stuff, but I'm just going to do it by dice, and it worked out perfectly. Three, two, one, can't beat that. All right, so the highest number is Montgomery. Then we have Bradley. Excuse me. And then we have George S. Patton Jr., old blood and guts. Okay, so for those of you who like to hear the die rolling sound, there was your only chance. For those of you who don't care for it, you can take it easy now, because it won't be coming back. Okay? All right, here we go. So, now, on each turn, you can take a number of actions. Basically, two actions. And there are a bunch of different things that you can choose from when it comes to deciding what you want to do. Now, I'm going to briefly show you the list here on one of the player aid cards. And then I'll go ahead and... Um, then I'll go ahead and start showing you how the actions actually work as we go through the game, okay? So if you look at the player aid card here, okay, you can take supply, take trucks, you can transport supplies because this is very much a logistics game, which is interesting. Um, you can move your core, you can get some air support, you can do an airboard landing, and as it says, you get extra actions by certain cards that are in your deck, okay? All right, so... Let's get rolling here. Montgomery is up first. And just for myself, what I do is I put two dice on one of the cards. I choose the blue one because, of course, not surprisingly, I'm biased towards Patton. Nothing against Bradley. Um, you know, I think Bradley was a solid commander. There was a reason he was called the GI General and all. Um, of course, this is not going to come as a shocker to any of my British viewers or any European viewers. I'm not a big fan of Montgomery, so, you know, for a variety of reasons. But, hey, you know, whatever works. Okay. So let's get rolling here. Now, at the beginning of the game, and I'll just go ahead and move you here real quick, and I'll show you using Montgomery, because he goes first. At the beginning of the game, you get a number of trucks, 
six. You have your markers. You have your air support marker. You have your commander marker, which has a special action ability that you can take each turn. And then you have cards for your four core. Okay, so let's take a look here at 30 core. Because, to quote General Horrocks and A Bridge Too Far, I like to think of this as one of those American Westerns. Where, of course, the Airborne, well, they're the homesteaders. And the Germans, they're the bad guys. And 30 Corps is the cavalry riding to the rescue. So, basically, with each unit, you can take up to six items. You can see there's three blank squares there, and then there's three items here. The black barrels are fuel. The brown squares are ammo. Now, this, the blue thing, well, <sighs> okay. Here's the thing. The game actually comes with a different piece. But I gotta tell you, with my big old fingers... I have a hard time grabbing that little gray disc. So what I did was I just took a bunch of my smaller six-sided dice and I'm using them as the food. Okay, so again, there's very much an emphasis on logistics in this game. Okay, you got fuel, ammo, and food. Okay, and of course you need all three to fight. You know, um, for obvious reasons. Especially the food, as Napoleon said, an army marches on its stomach. But as somebody said in one war movie too, not the American army apparently. So, anyway. So each one of those has their supplies, okay? So let's go ahead and let's start taking actions. And we'll go ahead and start getting Montgomery moving, all right? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to focus on doing a core action. Now, when you activate a core, you can move it up to a maximum of three spaces, okay? Okay. Um, Sometimes more, sometimes less. Well, not more, I should say. Let me take that back. Sometimes less, depending on circumstances that are going on there. Okay? So every time you activate one, we'll start with the British First Corps here, which if you see the star space here, this is your main supply base. Okay? Basically, all your supplies are going to come through here, unless you capture a limited supply area, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Okay? So we're going to activate the first British Corps. Now, every time you activate a core, the first thing you do is you go to their card, and you grab a barrel because you got to have the fuel, okay? Now, the fuel allows you to move three spaces, okay? Every space you move into that's empty, okay, like this space here, Yvetot, maybe? Hmm. I don't know, like I said, my French is not very good. When you move in, you draw a card from your deck. Now, each side has its own special set of cards, okay? Montgomery, on his cards, he has a red symbol, that you can see down there in the corner, okay? Each card has some kind of headline, and then it has a symbol. Now, this card basically has one of two effects. Either it's a weather effect, as you can see the sunshine there, or it has no effect if you're not playing with the optional weather rolls, okay? It's just kind of a, a card that lets you move into the space and keep on rolling, so to speak. And again, notice the red symbol down there lets you know it's Montgomery's deck. So since I'm not using the optional weather roll here, we just move in, we put down a control marker, and to quote Yogi Bear, away we go. So, we're going to keep moving. Now we're going to move on deep. Let's see what's there. And, oh, the resistance. Now, resistance basically allows you to take an extra action each turn. If you see this hand symbol, that means that you can hold on to it. You don't have to play it right away. Some cards you have to play right away if they give you a bonus action. Other cards you can hold. This one you could hold. So for the time being, I'm going to hold it. Okay? And now I've moved in here into deep. And now I'm going to finish my move, the third space here, into Abbeville. And, oh, this is a good one for a start. Look at that, captured supplies. So you can see the oil barrel, okay? Which is good, because they just used oil up, okay? Captured supplies in this game are a card you are going to love. Take my word for it. So the British First Corps managed to get some captured supplies. And now they are done. That was their movement, okay? You cannot move the same core twice in a turn. So I could not go ahead and activate them again and keep pushing, okay? That is not legal. <clears throat> Please try again, okay? All right, so for my second action here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start um, just showing you how some of the game works here. And again, this is not necessarily the best strategy. This is just showing you the different mechanics, okay? So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take supply. Now, when you take supply, you have a couple of options here. First of all, you can take one of these sets of three, okay? And how many you have depends on how many players you have, whether you're playing solo, two players, or three players. So you can take a set of three food, ammo, or oil. The other thing you can do is what's called a basic set. And the basic set here, as it says always, you can take one fuel, one ammo, and one 
food, depending on what you want to do. Okay. Now, right now here, early in the game, we're just racing. Okay. We're just moving along as fast as we can. All right. So what I'm going to do is for my take supply action, I'm going to go ahead and grab three barrels and put them in the main supply base here. Now, in a main supply base like this, you can place up to nine items total. Okay. In a limited supply base here, like deep, you can see there's a picture of the three there. Let me zoom in a little bit to so make sure you can see what I'm talking about. Hang on. So if you look here at deep, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, you can see there's an ammo, there's a food, and a fuel. So a limited supply list, you can place those things and nothing else. Okay, only three. That's all you can go ahead and put there. Okay. So I mean, it has the advantage of being further up the map, but you can't place as many things. Okay. So we'll talk more about placement here a little bit later. Okay. So that is Montgomery's second action. Now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and use the resistance card, and I could take a third action. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and activate 30 core with the third one. So I'm going to use the resistance card. I will activate 30 core, grabbing a barrel, putting it back into the supply. And by the way, items are limited by what's available. So if you want to get some ammo and for some reason there's none available, eh, too bad, so sad. Go cry someplace in the corner because you can't have any. All right, that's all there is to it. So let's see what 30 core is going to do. So they're going to move here into... Vernon, I believe. Oh, there are starving civilians. Oh, no. Now, notice this card. That means if you give up one of your food supplies, you can get a medal. Remember, one of the ways you win this game is the medal. However, you have to be careful because if you don't have food, you can't go. But early in the game here, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give up 30 course food, symbolized by my dice, and I'm going to get myself a medal and put it in front of Montgomery. All right. Moving along here to, uh, I'm not even going to try that one, sorry. <laughs> Alright, okay, this is another one that would be a weather card, okay, rainy, stormy weather, but I'm playing it as no effect for the for the purposes of this demonstration, because the weather rules are optional. Ah, but now I'm moving for my third move, okay, and if you look at my third move here, I'm going to, I me, mean, I think is how you pronounce that, and there is a metal down there. So let's see, is it a good card? Uh-oh. It's the Wehrmacht, the 245th Infantry Division. Now, when you fight, combat's pretty straightforward here. You basically have to have the resources to win the battle. Okay, so here I need one ammo box. Well, fortunately for me, on 30 cores card, I do indeed have one ammo box. Okay, now, if I had pulled this card before the third move, then this symbol here basically means that if I don't have any more gas, I can't go forward. But this is the third space, so that really doesn't matter. And when you win one of these, you put them in front of where you're at. And again, this is the place that has a metal. So, 30 core just helped the British get another metal. So they got two already out of the gate. But the bad news is, uh-oh, empty. 30 core's card is empty. There's nothing there, okay? So they got a problem to deal with there, okay? Now, after you play your two actions, or of course the bonus action in this particular case, or you play your commander card, which I didn't do with Montgomery this time, maybe I'll do it next time around, then you place German markers. Now, the German markers are pretty straightforward. There's nothing fancy to them. They're just, you know, they got a German flag with the Balkan crews on it, okay? Or Kreutz, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And basically what you have to do with them is this. You can place them anywhere, including on your own spaces, but they have to be able to trace a line back to Dusseldorf, which is right there, the big cross, okay, up there, okay. So you can link these like a chain, okay, um, but they must be able to trace back to there. Now, of course, all the black spaces on the other side, the, I guess it would be the right bank of the Rhine if you're looking at a map, all those are connected. So you could go ahead and place from any one of those spaces there. Now, of course, since I'm doing this for Montgomery, then what I'm going to do, naturally enough, is I'm going to annoy Patton. So I'm going to put this right here. Now, notice this is one of those spaces that's white and blue, so I'm annoying Bradley at the same time. Two for one. Pretty good. All right. And that is one complete player turn. So now we will move on to Bradley here in the middle. All right. So let's see what Brad's going to do, okay? Now, Bradley's core all start 
So I'll move it here briefly. Here we go. Bradley's core all starts with lots of fuel and lots of food, but no ammo. So he's going to need some ammo pretty quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you um, some more of the actions that go in this game. And I'm going to get Bradley ready to race this next turn. Okay. So the first thing I'll do with my two actions is action number one. I'm going to go ahead and take three ammo from supply and put it in Bradley's supply home supply base. Again, it is star-shaped, plus it has a flag. It's kind of easy to find. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to transport supplies. Now, when you transport supplies, you basically take these little green trucks and you put them on any lines to connect from one space to another. Okay, as you go along, you will fill those spaces, which becomes important because once the space is filled, until we get to the supply check, which we'll talk about here before too long, you cannot use that space again. Okay, so you really have to kind of think and plan this game out. It is rather interesting, and it is very much a um, you know, really in this game, you're not Montgomery or Patton Bradley, uh, you're more like in the only quartermaster general I can think of off the top of my head is Montgomery Meigs, who was the quartermaster general, if I remember correctly, for the Union Army during the Civil War. And um, I don't know why his name always sticks in my head. I studied the Civil War like right around the beginning of the 2000s. From 2000 to 2005, I did that for intensely for five years and decided, okay, I learned everything I wanted to know and I went back to other topics I enjoyed. So, um, so now... Getting back to this here. So you're basically Quartermaster General is the point of that. Now you can transport up to five items, okay, from a space. Now if I wanted to, I can go back over here and I could put three barrels in two and then transport everything next turn if I wanted. But I'm going to show you how this works, just so you can see. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and take one box of ammo, okay, and I'm going to move it up to here. So it's going to go on 19th core. Okay. Now when you put this here, the space that it's pointing to is the space that you're at. So right now he's already managed to get there. Now you can drop off supplies as you go, okay? And you can um, leave supplies from a core and have another core move in. So for example, you know, if I wanted to, I could have, you know, one core leapfrog the other, although you can't move into the same space as another core, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, I could go ahead and do that and then basically have the other core pick up the supplies if you don't want to use your trucks. So there's some interesting little things going on here with this. Now I'm going to take the other two ammo boxes and again you could take a total of five things um, whatever combination you want of food, ammo, and fuel and I'm going to move one and I'm going to set the second one here. So I'm going to drop one off with these guys, the fifth core and then I'm going to take one up here to the seventh core. Okay. Now how many trucks you place and how many you can have is all detailed down here on the logistics chart. Okay. Now Bradley begins the game with a bit of an advantage. Okay. Because you can look here and see, I could place three trucks. Because here's where it says truck placement. So that's why I was able to put three trucks from Bradley, except I took them from the general supply. Whoop. Yeah, you gotta watch that. Don't do that. Make sure you take them from in front of the car. Whoops. All right. So I can place three. Notice. Montgomery and Patton can only place two until they move up. Whenever there is the supply interface, you bounce up one level, okay? And it tells you how many trucks you're allowed to have and then how many trucks you can pull from the pool, which is where I was pulling it from a minute ago, okay? For, um, to, re to basically replenish them. And we'll go through that process here in a little bit. Um, I'll have somebody pull that action, okay? So there's Bradley's two things. He's getting ready to roll for next turn. And advance up the board. Now again, end of his turn, he needs to place a German marker. And of course, he's going to support Patton by placing one down here. Uh, actually, you know what? We're going to place it here. And then basically, maybe try to link a chain down here to Brussels. Because Brussels is worth a medal for the British. Alright, on to Patton. Alright, now, Patton again. Two actions here. And Patton also needs ammo. So I'm going to kind of do the same thing with Patton, but then I'm going to use his commander card to show you how that works. So first action, I take the three ammo, and I put it, put it in Orleans, because of course Patton is still the one. If you don't get that reference, look it up. The second action I'm going to do is with my trucks. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and have my trucks go one and... Two. Now, of course, remember, I can only place two trucks because Patton is limited right now. So um, that's unfortunate. Okay. Now, if you stop, 
then you take whatever supplies you had and you put them in the space where they ended. Now next turn I will be able to bring them up to here. But this core, if you see, it's kind of behind Bradley, which is annoying to start the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Patent Special Ability, which is an extra core move in each turn. And when you do that, you just basically flip the card over. So you can't use it again until the Supply Inner Check. And I'm going to go one, two, and three. Now since, of course, those were controlled spaces, I don't have to flip any cards off Patton's deck. Okay, And since these guys moved into here, they can go ahead and just pick up an ammo box, so they'll be ready to rock and roll too on the next turn. Okay, And now, of course, we'll have Patton go ahead and place his German marker. Okay? And the German markers are basically a timer. So when the last one is placed, then, then the, turn, the game is over. Now, if it was placed in this particular case by, say, Montgomery, then both Bradley and Patton would get one more turn before the game was over, and then you count medals, obviously, if no one's gotten across the Rhine. Okay? All right. Now, let's see. So Patton's finished there, so let's go back to Montgomery now. All right. So now Montgomery, I'm trying to think here how I'm going to do this to show you off some things here that also go with the game. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's... Hmm, can I do that? Hmm... I'm going to have to wait a turn, I think, to do that, if I want to do that that way. But I could go ahead and do that. Um, hmm. Yeah, Montgomery doesn't have a whole lot of trucks here either. So supply is, is an issue for him. All right, the British First Army, though, can go ahead and move. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take the first action, and I'm going to go ahead and move the British First no, actually, let me do it this way to show you how this works. So, the airborne forces are over here on the side. I'm going to go ahead and move you and I'll zoom in. Notice the board is a little awkward because it's long. I mean, turning it sideways would kind of ruin the effect. But there's the airborne units, of course. The All-American 82nd Airborne, 101st Screaming Eagles. This is the Polish Independent Brigade. I had to ask about that one and look it up, too. And these are the Red Devils, of course, of the British forces. Now, if you wish to use one of the airborne units, you can drop them onto a space. Okay, but it will cost you a medal. Because if you look there at the top, by the L on the channel, you can see one drop is one medal. So if you want to drop anybody, it's going to cost you a medal. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop them up here on boulogne sur mer Okay, because when you enter a fortress space, okay, which, let's zoom in here so you can see what's going on with this action. Just give me a moment. I'm having trouble with the tripod tonight, I'm not sure why. So you can see the fortress space there, okay, and you can see that it has a slash through a ammo spot there because it's going to cost you one extra ammo just to get into there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and fight our way into there. So what I'm going to do for the first action is I'm going to drop the airborne onto there. Okay, so I'm going to use my metal and obviously I'll drop the Red Devils. Pretty sure they're called the Red Devils if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I've seen a bridge too far. I'll be honest about that. And now the second action I'm going to do is activate the British First Corps. So again, I'll take fuel. And the first place I'll move into is this empty space here. And again, I'll draw a card off Monty's deck. It's Starving Civilians. Whew. You know what? That's okay. We'll get food transported up. So, and I just gave up a medal, so I'd like to get a medal back as Monty. All right. Now, notice here that this space has a German black flag. So that means instead of drawing a card off of Monty's personal deck, we're going to actually draw it off another deck, a deck of German cards that are fighting formations. Some of these are smaller formations, like the ones you find in the Allied deck, like that one that um, Montgomery already took out, the 245th Infantry Division. Some of them are whole Panzer divisions, um, and those ones are a lot harder to defeat. Okay, So we'll go ahead and we'll move into here. All right, Now, the Red Devils will take care of the ammo box, so we don't have to worry about the ammo, but once an airborne unit is used, it's out of the game. So let's see what we ran into here. Whoo! This is not good. We ran into the very powerful German 116th Panzer Division. Okay. Now, this one here has two boxes of ammo and a fuel, so it takes a lot to beat these guys down. 
Okay. Now, notice they're also worth a medal. So if you beat these guys, you got an extra medal for yourself. Now, I don't have that. The only thing I have is one little box of ammo. Okay. So if you don't have the requirements, you basically spend what you have. So bye-bye ammo. And then you have to fall back. Okay. So that's what will happen, and that will end their turn as well once you defeat it. And then, of course, that German force that wasn't defeated, you put them back into the deck. And then you just shuffle the German combat deck, because you never know where they might be redeployed to okay, on the map after they're done. Maybe they need to regroup. I mean, they might have won the battle, but, you know, given the German supply situation at this point in time, among other things, you know, it, they, may, uh, they may need to be, you know, sent someplace quiet, <clears throat> Arnhem, and then, you know, sent back into the field, okay? So, we did manage to get here, but we did not manage to get up to this spot there. Okay, so again, Montgomery's turn is now finished. So he again will place down a marker, and he's gonna make German trouble for Bradley. And push into this space here, okay? All right, so now moving along. Speaking of Brad, let's go to Bradley here. Okay, now Bradley's ready to roll. He's got lots of people. He's all set. His core is ready. We got supplies here, there, and everywhere. So let's start pressing as quickly as we can. So we're going to go over here with the seventh core. We're going to spend one of their fuel barrels and let's start moving them. Let's see what we run into. So the first place, Mio, I think is how you pronounce that. The first thing they run into, ooh, captured stock. They got some ammo. Lucky them. Well, lucky us. Look, 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 look. If you're a Black Adder fan, you get it. If not, watch Black Adder the Third. All right, so they picked up another ammo box. Okay, that's great for them. All right, they're going to continue to drive. So they're going to Sasson up here. Oh, it's just an event card, truce between Finland and the Soviet Union. So that's fine. And of course, now they're going to spend their last move up here into Reims. Because, again, it's a blue and white space, so either Bradley or Patton can go there. And, uh, well, now see, this one here would cost you an extra gas to keep moving. But since it's the third and final spot you move into, you don't really have to worry about that gas. And Bradley's managed to pick up a metal. That's actually worked out well for him. Okay. All right, now, for his second activation, let's see, what can I have Bradley do? Oh, I took one too many from Brad before. He's got three. Okay, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and show off the supply interface, just because I don't want to make this video too terribly long, and I do want to show you all parts of the game. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and take trucks from supply. Now, again, Bradley can do that with six of these, so two four, six. Now when the last one is taken from supply, you interrupt the turn and you do the supply check interface. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that now and then we'll go from there. Now of course, if Bradley had moved or he had drawn the trucks first, then there would have been the supply interface and then he could have taken his second action after that. So now, he's already taken his two actions, so once this is done, then he'll wrap up his turn. But again, otherwise, you interrupt, and then you just go ahead and keep on going. Okay? So the supply check interface, first thing you do is everybody's marker on the logistic chart moves up one level. Now, when somebody reaches level three, which will always happen in a three-player game right off the bat, um, if you're only playing with two players and playing Patton and Montgomery, it'll take a little bit longer, then you go ahead and put two more bonus trucks into the pool, and then two for each player which is another six, which AKA is all the trucks that are available in the game. That's the first thing you do with an inner supply phase, okay? Now, each core on the board, they must immediately spend one food or get grounded. Grounded basically means they cannot move until they get food, okay? Now, I typically go ahead and start with whoever caused the supply check. So now Bradley here, of course, has plenty of food. So we're gonna pluck one food off each core so he's ready to roll. Patton has one food on each core. 
so he'll still be fine and he can roll as well. Now, Montgomery, good news and bad news. 30 core has no food, so they're going to get flipped down. So basically, you just flip your block face down. The first British first core is going to do the same. Now, the 12th British and the 2nd Canadian have food, and they'll be able to go ahead and stay face up. Okay? So that's the second thing that you do with the supply check interface. All right? Now, all trucks are going to remove from the board, no matter where they are, and place in the allied supply. So the trucks that Bradley and Patton placed are going to go into the supply pool here. Okay? Which is important because now your arrows are clear. Okay? Until that happens, when you start really getting up the board and laying all those trucks there in a line of like 10 or something, you won't be able to send anything along that supply line again until you have one of these supply check interfaces and gets them off there. Get them off the board, rather. Okay. Now the next thing you do is you go down here to the Allied stock and you refill it. Okay. So quite a few folks took ammo, so we'll put three ammo, three ammo back in. And then we'll also do three barrels here as well too. Okay. So that's the allied stock, which again can be drawn by everybody, but until this interface comes up, then, you know, once it's gone, it's gone until that point in time there. Okay? All commander cards are turned face up. Well, only Patton turned his face down last time. Okay? So he's all set there. Okay? And then air support markers are returned to their players, which basically at this point we don't have that issue because um, I didn't use them yet, but I will use one of them here very shortly just to show you how. It works, okay? Now Bradley will complete his turn by again putting down a German flag, and he's gonna work on getting to Brussels. Okay, all right, now, Patton. Well, Patton's gonna go ahead here, and let me take a look and see if I have a way I can use his air support. Eh, not really, okay. So what I'll do first is I'll do a place truck action. Now, notice here with the trucks, you can start in a space that already has supplies, and you don't have to do the trucks all together, okay? So if you look at what I'm doing here, all right, I've placed the two trucks on two different lines coming from the same space, okay? So one of them has taken ammo to the 20th core, and the other one has taken the ammo to the 12th core, okay? Which is good, now they have their ammo. But the problem is, now these two blue lines are taken up, so I won't be able to go and move any more supplies on those lines until the next supply interface and I'm going to need food because my guys used up all their food so the next inter inter interchecks phase they're going to be grounded because they won't have any food okay all right so Patton did that so let's go ahead and have Patton I'm going to have this the um, 12th core start racing up here to try and get one of those limited supply centers so that'll be my second move well or should I use my Patton card for that um Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm working this out. Um, hmm. You know, I'll just go ahead and move these guys as my second action. Okay, so now Patton, of course, for the first time, we'll get to draw off his deck. Oh, and he starts with a humdinger. Captured stock. So right away, these guys get more ammo. Okay. Oh, one thing. Always remember to take your barrel off. Sometimes it's easy to forget. I find myself doing that often, even having to count again. Move it into another empty space. What did we find this time? Oh, we found starving civilians. But of course I had no food. So I can't get yeah, I couldn't give them food even if I wanted to. Now to quote the dude, that's a bummer man. Alright, and then my third and final move. I'll move them up one more. Oh look at that. They captured some more supplies. They captured some oil. They fuel. Well, that's terrific. Now they got two ammo and two fuel. Okay. Awesome. Now, I could use Patton's ability, and I could ignore the limited supply spot and drive on Mets if I wanted to and capture Mets and get the metal and get caught up in the metal race. <sighs> Well, nobody's putting any German workers too close to there. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and leave that be um, for this turn. Okay? So now Patton will place his German marker. And again, not surprisingly, he's going to 
be annoying Montgomery because he's not worried about Bradley yet. All right, and then going to move on back to Montgomery. Now, I will say one thing about playing the game by yourself is when you're putting down those German markers, it kind of becomes pretty obvious where you should be putting them based on who's moved where, how far they've got, et cetera, et cetera, those kind of things. So, um, you know, it should be pretty... It, 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 it's not too hard to play this game solo, even if you don't use the solo method, um, which I may or may not highlight with a later... Um, video because the solo method I think is okay um, but yeah um, <laughs> to quote Harry Shapiro when the Red Cross guy asks them how they're treated and stuff Shapiro goes I like it here eh. that's kind of the way I feel about the solo method so. alright so let's do one more turn through because I don't want to make this too ridiculously long but I, I want to show you the air power thing too here as well and show you the limited supply bit too. So first thing I'm going to do with Montgomery is I'm going to go ahead and do a limited supply base. I'll do a set, which remember set is one food, one ammo, and one oil. Not to be confused, of course, with one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. Because, of course, you know, I ain't seen my baby since I don't know when. I'm drinking bourbon, whiskey, scotch, and gin. All right, so I'm going to put that there. Now, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use Montgomery's special ability and I can add two more supply items there so I'm going to add another food and another fuel because I want to get 30 core up and running again too and they're going to need both fuel and food from that okay so I've got five supply here on this limited space okay limited space spaces normally only you get to three supply but they can hold up to six items on a spot um, as well okay all right so now that I've done that well the logical thing of course would be to transport some of this stuff but of course I can't reach 30 core just yet so that's a bit of an issue there okay um, so let's see what should I do here well you know what I am gonna do I'm gonna show you encirclement I'm gonna activate the Canadians beauty eh? so again barrel don't forget your barrels boys and girls all right, let's roll. Roll them, roll them, roll them. Get these doggies rolling. So they're going to move into here. What they run into? Oh, they ran into fuel. Oh, no, they don't have any more fuel, so they got to stop. Well, okay, so my plan of encirclement <laughs> did not work out so well. They got stopped already. Ah, shoot. What I was going to do was put them up to here and then up to here okay so basically let me just show you so if that if my plan had gone the way it was supposed to and the canadians had got all the way up to here then see how these three spaces are surrounded then you would just put markers down there spaces with a german flag are never captured this way if it's got a german flag on it you basically the germans are like come get some and you got to go do it okay so i would have been able to encircle and then put down markers here as well too but unfortunately, the Canadians ran into some logistical issues. Um, so they didn't get very far. All right, well, that's the way the cookie crumbles. So, so now Montgomery gets to place his marker here. And he's going to come down here. Again, trying to annoy and block Patton. No big surprise there. All right, Bradley's up next. Now, now Bradley, of course, really is, wants to be racing. Literally racing to the Rhine at this point. Because he's got some pretty well-stocked core here. All right. So let's start with that. Let's go ahead and we'll have Bradley um, race forward with 7th core some more. So first base they move into. They ran into starving civilians. Ah, I do have the food. I can use the metal. Okay, fine. We'll go ahead and we'll give up the food. And we'll get the metal. So now that gives him two medals, tying him with Montgomery. All right. So now we're going to try and race up here to Luxembourg, because Luxembourg has a medal. All right. Ooh, we ran into the German 708th Infantry Division. Okay. So now, again, we need one box of ammo, which we have. If you look here, you can see we have the box of ammo. But notice, if we want to keep going, we've got to spend a barrel of fuel. So that's what I'm going to do, because I want to keep going. Okay. And then I'm going to collect that card. Now, at the end of the game, when you're counting, if you count medals, for every five German cards that you have, 
that are combat units that don't have a medal, no, this one doesn't have a medal like the 116th Panzer Division, then every five of them gives you an extra medal. Okay, so it is good to defeat these forces. All right. Okay, one more move here. Whoops. We're going to drive up to here for the third and final step. Okay, we got a resistance card, which, remember, the little hand means I can keep it. I don't have to play it right away. All right. Oh, well, no, I can't move the same core twice in a turn. Otherwise, I could drive into Luxembourg. We're going to have to wait on that. All right, now, what should I do here? I'll tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to go ahead just to show you what a nice long truck lane looks, looks like. Oh, I don't have any supplies down yet. Oh, you know what? That's okay. I still have one action left. I've only done one thing. So I'm going to go ahead and use the resistance. And I'm going to go ahead and put down... Um, I'm going to go ahead and put fuel down. Okay? And then I'll go ahead and transport supplies. So now Bradley can put down four trucks. One. Two. Three. Four. So he's trucking those things along. Now again, I could drop off a barrel to this fifth core if I wanted, but I'm not going to. I'm going to go ahead and keep rolling up to there because I want those supplies to get to that spot there. Okay? And again, Bradley is done. He did his two actions, plus of course the resistance. Give him another one, and of course, naturally, he's going to block Montgomery by putting a German marker in Brussels. And now we're up to Patton. Now, Patton here, I should be able to show you the only other action that I haven't really done on the card is um, the air support. So let me show you how that works here with Patton. So the first thing I'll do to get Patton an extra move, I'm going to go ahead and use his card. So I'm going to activate the extra core. And that, of course, will be this core here so they can drive on Mets. So again, my barrel whoops, goes into supply. Okay, so we're going to step up here. Um, hmm, actually, you know what? Hold on. Before I activate that core, I should go ahead and do the whole, um, hmm. See, the problem is I'm not close enough. I don't know if I can keep that on there until I use it. Let me double check the rules on the air power real quick. Because um, the air power is the one that I thought was a little bit um, ambiguous. Here we go. Okay, pick up the top card from the chosen deck and place your air support marker on it. In case of combat or movement by the owner, the air support marker on the deck, one ammo will be added to the strength of the core which triggers drawing the top card. So see, I'm not close enough to Mets. Because what I'd like to do is draw it at Mets. Trying to think about how I can do this so I can show you guys. Okay, I'll tell you what. Here's what we're going to do. I'll still take the bonus one. I'll move into Nancé. There's starving civilians there, but I don't have any food, unfortunately, for that. Okay? So, that's too bad. Can't get the medal. Can't help the people either, which is even worse. All right, now, I only moved one space. You don't have to take all three of your moves. Okay? So, what I'm going to do now is, now that I've managed to do that with the first uh, with the bonus action i'm going to take my first action and i'm going to go ahead and peek at what's on the mets card so you take your area marker and you put it on top okay after you peek some look at peek what's on there oh well it really wasn't needed it was a black market card so okay so i'll put it there and then i'll activate these guys and then of course i'll spend another barrel and I will drive into Mets, which will cost me one ammo box. Okay. Now, when you flip the card, you remove the air marker and you don't get it back again until the next supply check interface. Okay. Now, the black marker card, as it says, you can swap. So I have a fuel and an ammo. I can swap it for food. I could swap one fuel for two ammo. I mean, it really would be up to me how I want to do it. Okay. Um, you know what, since I've got two more moves, I think I will swap the fuel for an ammo. Just to see if I can get up here to this fortress, okay? So I did manage to capture Mets. And that is a medal, which is awesome. So now Patton's got his first medal of the game. 
All right, so for a second move, I'm going to drive up into here. Let's see what's on that deck. Ah, oh, of course, naturally. Since, of course, I gave up the fuel, what happens? All right, um, I end up getting stopped there, so I won't be able to get to one of those other fortresses, which you can bet Montgomery is going to put a marker into there to basically thwart Patton with that. All right, and speaking of German placement markers, it's the end of Patton's turn. So I'm going to go ahead and put one in Antwerp here. Although Bradley's, I really should probably be dealing with Bradley on the Rhine, but eh, for the purpose of this video, I'll put it there. Okay. Uh, so that's basically how this game works. It's an interesting game. Um, there's some different variations of it. There's a solo one. There's also one where you can take all the Allied cards and combine them into one giant deck, which I've tried. Um, I played this thing about nine times altogether. Um, I tried three times with each of the games so yes that's right you guessed it there's a review coming in the near future as well uh, on this game but i will say that um overall i have a favorable impression of this game uh, i think this is the kind of game i could um, play with my wife because it's pretty straightforward um i don't see it as being really any more complicated rule wise than say like history of the world or um you know pandemic or Nations, which of course are games that we all play, because um, my wife's not a, a war gamer. She's not a hex encounter um, type of lady. So, um, so any kind of game that I can play that has like a war theme like this uh, for competitive purposes is a bonus, um, quite frankly. So, so anyway, that's how this race to the Rhine works. Um, and again, I just wanted to show how a game actually plays because this is fairly pricey on the secondary market right now. Uh, I didn't learn about this until I saw a thread on Board Game Geek for Race to Moscow, which of course naturally caught my attention because uh, that's all about Barbarossa. And it's basically the same idea here um, during the Barbarossa campaign, although there are, uh, my understanding from what I've seen so far is it does seem like the solo method is a little more challenging. Um, and the, one of the stretch goals was to create an independent um, AI to control the Russians. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. I pledged that, actually, as soon as it went active because, you know me, I just can't get enough Eastern Front games. All right. So next time, more than likely, next few days, I'll, I'll try to carve out some time to um, do a review after I kind of flesh out my initial thoughts uh, about the game. Um, but it is interesting. It is different. Uh, I, I can honestly say in my 653 games, I think is what I own now, I've never really played a game quite like this. The only other game that springs to mind, to me, that puts such an emphasis on logistics is um, Joe Balkowski's The Korean War, where you build your depots and um, it affects the value uh, of your combat factors, depending on how big the depot is. Uh, when your units draw the supply from the depot to fight, um, to attack, I should say. I'm pretty sure defense is, is not affected by that. So, um, so anyway, um, it also says something about this game, too, than the fact that I don't play too many Western Front games. I just, you know, the after the Allies, the, the Allied part of things from 43 to 45, I don't play too many games... Um, doing the land campaigns of that. I, I've played the occasional Arnhem game. Um, I used to own uh, Montgomery's Gamble. Um, I've also played, um, you know, Bulge. I have the, the Fab, Fast Action Battle Bulge, which is probably the best Bulge game for me because it's just quick, easy, and, you know, if I really want to do the Bulge, uh, I can quickly do it. So. But um, the only Western, honestly, the only Western front I really do of games. I do have the Sicily Fab um, too, but the only one, the other one I really do is the air campaigns. I have B-17 Flying Fortress Leader and Winging a Prayer and Target for Today and somewhere else B-17 Queen of the Skies as well too. I don't really do a whole lot um, with that. I don't really do a whole lot with the Western Front period. Um, you know, even the France 1940, I don't do a whole lot with that. It just doesn't really interest me. Not like the Eastern Front does. North Africa really doesn't either. Uh, when I was younger, when I was a kid, Rommel and Patton were the first two generals I really studied. So, I mean, it did interest me then, because, of course, they were both there, and then they both ended up in Western Europe and all. But, um, you know, as an adult, it's just not that interesting. Right? So, 
So there you have it. There's how Race to the Rhine works. A diceless combat system. Which is, um, you know, still is, it's very interesting. I mean, it is very much a, a, um, a numbers game, if you will. But, you know, I'll talk more about that kind of stuff when I do my review. It'll be easier that way when we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So, this is Tim Korsman from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time with my review and my thoughts on Race to the Rhine. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.